For those who may have missed the news, I'm currently running my most ambitious prize competition yet on the channel, which ends on March 1st. Last time we did the PS5, and it was a great success. This time, I've put up for grabs my very own Collector's Condition 1953 MV Augusta motorcycle. A real-world museum piece, either as an investment or a bike that you could genuinely use every day if you wanted to. Now, it is, of course, UK residents only due to shipping, and entries are £5. So any who are interested in winning a gorgeous classic bike, of course, click the link in the description and check it out. Well, this review's been a long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> because ages ago on the channel, I of course posted one of my maybe more controversial reviews for a car in Gran Turismo 7, one of the most notable new additions to the game, the Black Series, the AMG Black Series, a car which, for all intents and purposes, should be one of many people's favourite new additions in the game, and yet for many of us, not just myself, and there were some who disagreed, but some of you, many, as I recall, who agreed with the sentiments that it just doesn't really live up to what you'd expect from a car like that. Now, with tuning, you can change everything, but at least in its stock form, you would already expect a Black Edition Mercedes to be something a bit special. And despite technically being quite quick, it doesn't really feel it most of the time. It's surprisingly heavy, but in an unwieldy way through corners. More Jay Leno tank car than Nissan GTR. And it just was a car that to me doesn't quite feel as special as something carrying the Black Series name should be. If you think of the outgoing models that came before it, it doesn't really have the same vibe as those. And maybe again that's just me, but if you compare it to the SLK Black Series, the C63 Black Series, definitely the SLS Black Series, the AMG GT Black Series, it feels kind of more like a GTR with some extra aero bits, rather than this truly unique machine. At least that's how it comes off to me. And many people even back when I reviewed that car said the one you really want to look at is the GTR. And that is absolutely true, and we're finally getting around to talking about my thoughts on the GTR, because this is, put simply, a way better car, even without doing anything to it. Now, you can definitely still feel the weight. It is a Mercedes at the end of the day, and Mercedes does have a tendency, even in their top performance models, to be quite heavy. The SLR is quite heavy, the SLS is, this one is as well. 1660 kilos is fairly hefty. It's not breaking the bank, but it's quite a lot. And thankfully, of course, the power is up there as well, at over 570. So no way near the black edition, but certainly more than enough to be a true contender in a super sports car or supercar category. Price-wise, it's also pretty good. It's 184,000 credits, so of course cheaper than the Black Series. And actually, it's a lot cheaper than many of the other supercars in the game. That's quite a good price. To be less than 200,000 is quite the steal. And ultimately, even the point level before or after doing anything to it isn't that steep. So what's it like in practice? Well, that really is where it sets itself apart. You can, as I said earlier on, definitely feel the weight, and the brakes, at least stock, do require slamming on the anchors a bit earlier than you might feel comfortable with in a tuned car, but it's kind of a road car problem. It is more realistic to have to brake earlier and to really feel that weight through corners, so I'm not saying that you're gonna jump into it and it'll feel like a Tomahawk or a Red Bull. Naturally, of course not, but you can immediately feel the innate raw potential that this car has and in a sense it kind of reminds me it's not quite the same but an example that comes to mind is if you compare the nissan gtr spec v to the nissan gtr nismo except on this occasion the nismo is pretty damn good whereas the black series didn't quite live up to it for me but what i mean by that is with the nismo you expect it to be that good because it's the top of the tree and likewise the black series as much as i dislike it it is technically very quick. The Spec V, on the other hand, kind of flies under the radar a little bit. It's the lighter, more hardcore, more track-focused, and more almost bare-bones approach to a GTR, and even though it doesn't have the wow factor of a Nismo, for those who know what to look for and know how to have a good time in any performance car on a track, it ticks all the boxes that you'd want. Again, kind of like comparing a Porsche 911 Turbo to a GT3 RS or a GT2 RS. The Turbo has tremendous numbers, and in a straight line, it's great. But on a track, well, that's where things change. Ironically, the Black Series AMG feels more like a straight line monster to me, whereas this feels much more at home and much more adept on the track, 
which is of course again what this one is intended for as well which adds to my feelings that these two cars kind of cannibalize each other in a weird sort of way to me there's not enough of a difference between the gtr and the black series and many people will of course disagree with that but uh, despite any difference in power and weight and performance, they just, they look so similar, they feel like they're intended for such a similar purpose, being these hardcore track day variants, that they do feel to me kind of cannibalistic. They're not set far enough apart, and they're certainly not far enough apart in terms of how good the one is compared to the other. Now, of course, this one, as with the normal GT, GTS, for example, in the game, are great tuning bases to work with, Generally speaking, you don't see cars like this used as much for their absolute top-end performance. It tends to be more, well, track day stuff, naturally. And overall, if you are more inclined, if you prefer to use rear-wheel drive, or if you have to use rear-wheel drive, I would say that for a less obvious choice over something like a Porsche, this is a pretty refreshing difference. It doesn't quite have the grip or it's you know not as forgiving as a GTR, it's not quite as hardcore, not as light as a Porsche, but it's a nice middle ground for those who, like myself, for sure, like to have their track day toys with a bit more grunt and a bit more torque forward performance and a bit more of a almost muscle car vibe. In that sense, it kind of vaguely reminds me of the Mustang. GT350R, albeit a bit lighter on its feet and perhaps a bit quicker, although I haven't compared them head to head. Ultimately, that's it for my thoughts though on the GTR. Of course, drop yours down below if you love the vehicle or maybe if you're not a fan of it. And of course, as I'll have put at the start of the video, if you are by any chance interested in winning a real world motorcycle, either as an investment collector's opportunity or to use it yourself, then of course, check out the link to my competition, which ends March 1st down below. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, Thanks for watching.